Hello, in this video you'll be learning about factoring special cases. Might be a good idea to have your notes open or to look over your notes from section 8.4 which was multiplying special cases because we're going to use some of the same stuff. Um, so let's start by taking a look at these five expressions here. Um, take a moment and pause the video and see what you notice about the following expressions. Okay, some things that you may have noticed about the following expressions is they all contain subtraction. And they also contain uh, square numbers. So 81, 36, 100, 25, 4, uh, and 1. Um, and all the letters are squared, x squared, y squared, w squared, and so on. In this lesson, you're going to want to be able to recognize square numbers easily. Okay, now the square numbers are 1, 4, 9, uh, we've got 16, 25, 36, 49, uh, 64, uh, what is that, 8, 9, 81, 100, uh, some other big ones, 121, that's 11, 12 is 144, 13 I believe is 169. So these are all numbers that um, you're going to want to uh, keep in mind when we're doing some factoring because you want to keep an eye out for these. These often will lead you to a special case factoring scenario. I'm going to erase them now to give me some more room, so make sure to copy those down in your notes. You might need to pause. All right. Getting rid of those. So, now that we know we have a difference of squares here, you'll probably remember, or you might not, that there was a rule about multiplying things like 9 minus x times 9 plus x. And if you multiply them together using FOIL or the box method, um, the middle term would go away and you'd end up with the square of the, uh, the first term minus the square of the second term. And that's exactly what's happening here. So if I wanted to factor uh, these expressions, uh, these are all difference of squares is what this is called. So difference of squares. You'll be hearing this a lot and using this a lot. Uh, so you'll get used to it, but it's pretty obvious. It's a difference because there's subtraction and there's two squares. And so if you see a square minus another square, it's just the square root minus the square root times the square root plus the square root or vice versa you, you can have these switched um, so pause this and see if you can get all of the answers for these and then when you resume you can check it out alright so I'm gonna do all the blue ones so this is gonna be 10 and just to switch around I'll show you that you can do the addition first as well I think I'm used to doing the subtraction first, but it doesn't matter. And this one uh, would be x minus 1, x plus 1. And now we can work the green. So this will be y minus 6, y plus 6. And this one will be 5x minus 2y times 5x plus to buy. Alright, and I've got a, another one hidden for you down here, just to make sure that you're clear. This one, uh, although tricky, is also a difference of squares. y to the fourth is a square. Any even number is a square, and I'll show you how. Um, if I take y squared and square it, you get y to the fourth. So y to the fourth is y squared squared. And so what we really have here, if we want to factor it, is you can write y squared minus x, y squared plus x. And if you don't believe me, you can FOIL it or, or box method this, and you'll see you get y to the fourth minus x squared. Um, okay, let's go on to the next thing. Uh, here, I've circled or squared a rule here that you may remember. It's when you multiply... Um, a binomial times itself, you get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, um, or sub 
if it's subtracted, this just changes the sign down here. That's also from Lesson 8.4. You go back, check it out. Um, what ends up here, these two right polynomials are called perfect square square trinomials. Trinomials. Perfect square trinomials. They're called that because um, they you get them by squaring a binomial. So a perfect square of a binomial gives you the perfect square trinomial. Uh, we can call that PST for short. So again, we'll be using that a lot in class, so get used to that. Uh, so let's take a look here. So here's one, a perfect square trinomial. What you're looking for to decide if this rule applies is you're trying to decide if the squared term um, here, well, let's see if it is a squared term, see if this one's a squared term. And so you can see that this is x squared and this is 3 squared. And if that's the case, the middle term needs to be 2 times both roots, right? Um, so is the middle term 2 times x times 3? If it is, then you have a PST and you can factor it back this way. Um, so this is the root, that's the root, and the middle is 2 times the root times the root, 6x. So that works. So we know that we can factor it by saying x plus 3 squared. All right, let's try this one here. Again, we're trying to decide, is this a squared term? That's pretty easy, it is. This is also a squared term. And we just need to find out, is the middle term 2 times x times 7? And if it is, then we can factor it uh, as a PST. Um, so minus 14x, that is. So it is x minus 7 squared. Okay, so you can see uh, once you know, once you can recognize a perfect square trinomial and a difference of squares, the factoring can be very quick. And you're going to see these a lot, so I imagine you'll get lots of practice. Um, here, let's determine if that's a square. It could be 2n squared. This could be 3 squared. And we want to determine if the middle is 2 times 2n times 3. Let's see, 3, 6, 12n, it is. So uh, the factored answer here, remember this is factoring, this is not simplifying, is 2n minus 3 squared. And again, you can check that out by foiling it or boxing it. All right, last example here. Is this a squared term? Yes, it is, 4x squared. 25 is a squared term. And we need to find out, is this 2 times 4x times 5? Uh, well, 5 times 4x is 20x times 2 is 40x. So this is not a PST. So we cannot use it. We cannot use perfect square trinomial factoring to factor this. We'll have to go the long route, which is factoring uh, with the A which was back, I think, last video. All right. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.